Right, the sections are on sound signals. Sound signals are uh, the other area besides towing where there are fairly significant differences between international and inland. Um, restricted visibility and an anchor, uh, those are all the same. So that's the good news. It's only when we're talking about signals for maneuvering that we have differences and they're subtle, uh, but very important differences. And so we'll definitely focus on those. So sound signals, first off, we get into some general rules. Uh, general rule, vessels less than 12 meters in length only have to have a means of making an efficient sound signal. Uh, it could be a whistle, could be an air horn. Uh, some look just like bicycle pumps, but uh, some means of making efficient signals. Larger vessels though, have specific equipment requirements and you're definitely gonna to need to remember these. Vessels 12 meters or more shall carry a power whistle or power horn. Vessels 20 meters or greater must also have a bell. So they're gonna have both power whistle or horn and a bell. And vessels 100 meters or greater are required to have a gong. Got a picture there I took on the ferry. That's what a typical gong might look like. It's back at the, towards the stern, it's just a big pan that somebody would beat on. Okay, definitions of what blasts are on that power whistle or power horn required to have. A short blast is a blast on the whistle of about one second. So a short blast. Prolonged blast are blasts of about four to six seconds. So, you know, roughly five seconds. And uh, when you're making these blasts, it's definitely helpful to count because you can be pulling on your horn thinking you're doing a prolonged blast. But unless you count, generally it'll only be about a two, two and a half second blast. And then other people who are listening, are, was it, what was that? Was that short or was that prolonged? I can't tell. So count it out, you know, definitely count it out so you can make sure it's long so that there's a distinct difference between short blast and prolonged blast. Okay, let's get into the maneuvering and warning signals. And we're gonna start out with international because this is the place where international is different than inland. So in international, the main thing about maneuvering signals is that they are signals of action. I am taking this action. And they consist of one short, two short, or three short blasts on the whistle. So international, one short blast means I am altering course to starboard. One short, I am altering course to starboard. Two short blasts, I am altering course to port. Three short blasts, I am operating the stern propulsion. So I've got this little diagram here on the lower right part of the slide. And this is another one of those things that I encourage everyone to draw on their scratch paper. Draw a little outline of a boat and draw two little arrows. I, I think of it like a, a bug with antennas, one going one way, one going the other way, and a little tail coming off. And then I draw little dots, one, two, and three, where I've got them here in this diagram. So that when I'm taking the test, I can remember, I can look at this and I say, oh yeah, one short means I'm turning to starboard. One, two short means I'm turning to uh, port. Three short means I'm operating a stern propulsion. It's just a good memory aid. You draw it on your scratch paper and then you have it there to answer any of those questions. Okay, let's put this in action. We have a meeting situation. Two vessels are approaching head on so that they re on reciprocal courses so that they see the lights of an approaching vessel, both side lights. What is the action on international waters in a meeting situation? It's required both vessels alter course to starboard and pass port to port. So if you're altering course to starboard, what's the whistle? One short, yep. One short, I'm altering course to starboard and we're gonna pass port to port. So here's our meeting situation, altering course to starboard, passing port to port. 
let's look at another meeting situation. Here we are, two vessels are meeting on reciprocal courses, but risk of collision does not exist. They're gonna pass safely, uh, in this case, port to port, just like they should. Uh, what's the signal? Remember, signals of action. So if they're not taking action, there is no signal. So passing safely, port to port, passing safely, starboard to starboard, no action taken, then you don't sound any signal. Okay, how about an overtaking situation? You're approaching a vessel, you want to overtake them on their port side. Uh, what are signals of, what are the options? Well, in this case, I'm altering course to port. So I'm gonna sound too short, altering course to port. What about the stand on vessel? They're not taking any action, so they don't sound any signal. In this case, I'm altering course to starboard, gonna overtake on their starboard side. Altering course to starboard, one short. The crossing situation, the preferred action is to alter course to starboard, pass the stern of the stand on vessel. So what would be the signal for altering course to starboard? One short, altering course to starboard, oops. Like that. And once again, the stand on vessel is not taking any action, so no signal. Okay, we have another special circumstance, circumstance in international rules. It's called overtaking in a narrow channel or fairway. And in this case, in a narrow channel or fairway, if we try to overtake, but we can't do it unless the vessel we're overtaking slides off to one side or the other to get out of the way. In this case, we have to have a special signal because we need them to agree to move out of the way. So here it's overtaking in a narrow channel. It's not a signal of action anymore. It's a signal of intent. So looking at the center of our diagram here, vessel A wants to overtake vessel B on vessel B's port side, but they need B to agree to slide off to starboard. The signal in this case is two prolonged blast followed by two short blast. Two prolonged, two short. I always talk about it as Two prolonged blasts, I have the two prolonged sides of the channel. Two blasts is I'm altering course to port. So that's how we put this signal together. Two prolonged blasts, narrow channel, I need you to move, followed by two short. I'm gonna do it on your port side. If vessel B agrees, they answer with a signal for consent, Morse code for the letter C, prolonged short, prolonged short. On the right hand side of the slide, it's just the opposite. Vessel A wants to overtake vessel B on their starboard side. They need vessel B to move over. So once again, two prolonged blast. Hey, I'm coming, I need you to do something. Followed by one short, I'm altering course to starboard. And if B agrees, it's the same agree signal of agreement, consent, prolonged short, prolonged short. This is an important one to remember. So narrow channel or fairway, it's a special signal because it needs to be an agreement with the vessel that's being overtaken. overtaken. So pro two prolonged blasts followed by either one short, I'm you know, altering course to starboard, two short, I'm altering course to port. And if vessel B agrees, the overtaken vessel, they agree with consent, prolonged short, prolonged short. Now we move on to inland rules and here's the difference in inland rules our short blasts are signals of intent the other thing about inland rules is if you are passing within one half mile of another vessel you must sound signals or you must come up with an agreement so this is another change between international passing within half a mile you have to have a signal of agreement and if there's a signal of agreement, both vessels have to respond with the same signal. 
So let's put it into action. <clears throat> well, first let's look at what the signals are. Okay, one short port to port. I intend to leave you on my port side. Remember one short on international was I am altering course to starboard. Here, we may be altering course to starboard, but we also just may be continuing on either way Whatever happens, I am going to leave you on my port side. I will do what it takes to leave you on my port side. One short port to port. Two short blast, starboard pass. I intend to leave you on my starboard side. So whether I change course or not, I'm going to leave you on my starboard side. Three short actually means the same as international because it's a signal of action. I am operating a stern propulsion. And let me talk about that too. This doesn't mean you're backing up. It just means you have thrown your engines in reverse. Of course, smaller vessels almost immediately start backing up, but larger vessels, it may take them a quarter mile, a half mile for a large container ship or something. It may take them even a mile before they stop and start backing up. Doesn't matter. When you put your engines in reverse, you sound three short blasts. So in an inland, one short port to port, two short blasts, starboard pass, and three is the same, operating a stern propulsion. Okay, here's our meeting situation again. Signals of intent. And uh, for inland rules, we threw in those three special words, unless otherwise agreed, we're gonna change course to starboard, and pass port to port unless otherwise agreed. So what's the signal for I'm going to leave port to port? One short, one short port to port. I intend to leave you on my port side. However, well, here we go again. So international, not changing course, no signal, right? But passing within a half mile on inland rules, we are required to come up with a signal and an agreement so it's going to be one short, I intend to leave you on my port side, one short port to port. But we're on the other side, no change, but you have to have that agreement. Two short blast, starboard pass, I intend to leave you on my starboard side. Overtaking situation, I want to overtake on the vessel's uh, port side. Too short, too short blast, starboard pass. I'm going to leave you on my starboard, right? In this case, the stand on vessel has to agree in inland situations, right? So if they agree, they sound the same signal back, too short. Going to overtake on the vessel starboard side, sound one short. I'm going to leave you on my port side. Stand on vessel agrees, they have to answer with the same signal, one short. Crossing situation, once again, preferred action, alter course to starboard, pass the stern of the vessel, inland rules, I'm gonna leave you on my port side, so I'm gonna sound one short, whoops. And if uh, stand on vessel agrees, has to sound the same signal back, one short. Okay, both international and inland. A vessel may supplement their short blast by flashes of a, an all around uh, light. <clears throat> In international, it can be an all around white light or inland, it can be an all around white or yellow light. This light would be shown out of one of the yard arms on either side and it would be synchronized with the short blast on the whistle so that at night, you might see three short blasts, which would mean uh, through three short flashes, which would be synchronized with three short blasts, meaning I am operating a stern propulsion. You know, it could be one short, could be two short, three short, but it'll be three short flashes synchronized with the whistle. And to kind of give you an idea of what this is for, you know, sound, can only travel so far, and especially if the wind is blowing away from you, the vessel may be sounding their whistle, but you cannot hear it, but you can definitely see the light a lot further than you might hear that whistle.
both international and in, when either vessel fails to understand the intentions or is in doubt whether sufficient action is being taken, must sound five or more short and rapid blasts. Call that danger or doubt. Five or more short and rapid blasts is the danger signal. And if it's any time you doubt what the other vessel is doing, or you don't understand the intentions, you disagree. And when you're seeing questions on the test, if the wording on the test says another, you see another vessel, but you wonder, you doubt the what he's doing is safe. As soon as you see those words, five or more short and rapid blasts. That's the way it is. Anytime you have any kind of doubt, even in questions on the test, five or more short and rapid blasts. Another one that's both international and inland. Uh, we talked about this one before. Nearing a bend or other uh, area where other vessels may be obscured by an obstruction, one prolonged blast to warn the approaching vessel that, uh, hey, I'm coming around the bend. Once you're inside of one another, then you figure out which maneuvering signals you're going to do. Inland only. Inland only, a vessel leaving a dock or berth sounds one prolonged blast. It's kind of a heads up. Hey, I'm pulling out. Okay, now we move on to signals and restricted visibility. Good news is signals and restricted vis visibility are the same for international and inland. We'll start off with signals for vessels underway and restricted visibility. Signals underway and restricted visibility consist of one prolonged blast, two prolonged blasts, one prolonged two short, or one prolonged three short blasts. And they're gonna sound these signals at least every two minutes. Okay. One prolonged blast is sounded by power-driven vessels making way in restricted visibility. One prolonged blast every two minutes, power-driven vessels making way. Two prolonged blasts is sounded by power-driven vessels not making way. So, so far we have power-driven vessels making way, power-driven vessels not making way. That's pretty straightforward and, and not to uh, exceed any two minutes. Okay, then power driven or everybody else sounds one prolonged, two short. And by everybody else, I mean not under command, restricted ability to maneuver, constrained by draft, fishing vessels, sailing vessels, towing vessels, all of these other vessels who have less maneuverability than a power driven vessel sound one prolonged, two short. Makes it fairly simple, clumped all those together. Well, of course, it must not be everybody because we have one more signal, right? One prolonged three short would be sound by a vessel being towed if manned. If there's people on the tow, then it's going to sound one prolonged three short immediately following the towing vessel that's going to sound one prolonged two short. So you can out in the in the fog, you hear this one prolonged two short. And then after that, over here, you hear one prolonged three short. You, you know, in your mind, you say, oh, there's a towing vessel over there and there's a vessel being towed with people on it. I've got to make sure I don't drive in between those two signals. So one prolonged blast, power driven vessel making way. Two prolonged blasts, power driven vessel not making way. One prolonged two short, everyone else. One prolonged three short vessels being towed if there are people on that vessel. This is another thing that I draw on my scratch paper. I get my scratch paper, I do the only new rods catch fish, so purchase some wiki wiki. I draw the little bug diagram with the two antenna, you know, one short altering course to starboard, two short altering course to port, three short operating to stern propulsion. And then I draw these lines. I draw one prolonged line, two prolonged lines, one prolonged, two short, one prolonged, three short. And you know, you remember that, oh yeah, the first one's power-driven making way, second one's power-driven not making way. 
Everybody else is one prolonged, two short, except for that unique one being towed, one prolonged, three short. We have one other identity signal we're going to put out there. Four short blasts. Four short blasts are sounded by a pilot vessel in the fog. Pilot vessel would sound these four short blasts immediately following uh, the prolonged blast. So if it's making way, it's going to have one prolonged, uh, four short. If it's not making way, two prolonged, four short. Okay, uh, it's supposed to be every two minutes the vessels would sound these. Uh, you obviously manually do it on your uh, on your powered horn, but some vessels, especially larger vessels, actually have a recording. So they just turn the recording to making way or not making way or broken down, and then this recording has it on an automatic timer that it's going to automatically sound these whistles. So just so you know kind of what's out there. These are the signals for underway and restricted visibility. Now we're going to talk about signals at anchor and restricted visibility. Vessels at anchor and restricted visibility are going to sound a rapid ringing of a bell for five seconds every minute. Ding, 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 ding. Five seconds long, five seconds of the ringing of the bell every minute. Holy cow. You can just imagine, you know, underway, it was every two minutes. But if I've spent an all night at anchor in the fog, I've got to sound this every minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Vessels that are greater than 100 meters in rank are good in length are going to follow the rapid ring of the bell with a rapid ringing of a gong back at the stern for five seconds. So there's going to be a rapid ring of the bell for five seconds and then a rapid ringing of the gong for five seconds. Vessels that anchor in restricted visibility also can sound an optional whistle signal to attract attention. So they're required to do the rapid ringing of the bell, but if they're out there ringing their bell every minute, but they hear an approaching vessel, but it seems to be getting closer and closer, maybe heading right at them. They're not sure that the other vessel can hear their bell. You can get on your whistle and sound one, prolong, one short, one prolonged, one short blast as an additional signal to attract attention if you don't think they're hearing your bell. Okay. Fishing vessels or vessels restricted in ability to maneuver while working at anchor, instead of sounding the rapid ring into the bell, sound the same signal as they do when they're underway. Remember, these are one of those vessels that was sounding one prolonged, two short when they're underway in restricted visibility. If they're fishing at anchor or restricted ability to maneuver at anchor, they're going to continue to sound that same signal, which is one prolonged too short. You're going to see questions on this in the test. Which of the following vessels sound the same signal, whether underway or at anchor and restricted visibility? And you'll have some choices. And the, the only the correct choices are going to be fishing vessels or re vessels restricted in ability to maneuver. OK, here's a rule that's special for inland only. Vessels less than 20 meters in length, and it also includes barges, canal boats, scows, and nondescript craft. If they are anchored in something called a special anchorage area, they do not have to display lights or shapes. Special anchorage areas would be marked on a chart very similar to what I've got here. It'd be a magenta dash line in a specific area, and it'll be labeled special anchorage area and vessels less than 20 meters in length inside those special anchorage areas do not have to have um, don't sound signals. Remember, they also didn't have to show anchor lights. So that's what's going on here. All right, now let's talk about vessels of ground. Vessels of ground are also gonna have to have special signals. For vessels of ground, they're going to have three distinct claps on the bell, a rapid ringing of the bell for five seconds, followed by three distinct strokes on the bell. So it'll be ding, 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 
ding, ding, ding, every minute. So that's the distinctive signal for vessels of ground. One of our memory aids is, I screwed up. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I screwed up. So three distinct strokes in the bell, rapid ring of the bell, three distinct strokes in the bell every minute in the forward part of the vessel. Large vessels greater than 100 meters are gonna follow that by a rapid ringing of the gong. So there's not gonna be distinct strokes on the gong, only on the bell. So three distinct strokes in the bell, rapid ring of the bell, three distinct strokes in the bell, and then immediately afterwards, rapid ringing of the gong in the after part of the vessel. Same international and inland. Okay. Just about done with this section. Signals and restricted visibility. A vessel less than 12 meters is not obliged to give these restricted visibility signals, but shall make some other efficient signal every two minutes. Remember, vessels less than 12 meters in length are not required to have power horns or bells. So if they're not required to have them, they are only required to have some means of making an efficient signal. So they're supposed to do it at least every two minutes, whether it's a blowing on a hand or, you know, like a coach's whistle, athletic whistle, or that air horn, whatever they've got, some kind of efficient signal every two minutes. Rule 36, uh, signals to attract attention. If necessary to attract the attention of another vessel, sound or light signals uh, can be used, but they cannot be mistaken for other signals authorized by these rules. So in other words, lights shouldn't be of the same color or uh, location to be confused with other signal lights. Uh, sound signals should not be uh, confused with other sound signals. Uh, so, but otherwise anything you need to attract attention. Okay, so that's it for sound signals.